Hey guys, welcome back to Dolly Boy 73 and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers and I believe that today is Q&A number 86. So I just switched my channel over to the new YouTube layout, finally starting to get used to it and eventually they're going to switch it anyways. So just give me your thoughts on the new channel layout, see what you think about it. And also I wanted to remind you guys, if you want to make sure you do not miss any of my videos, go to my channel. Or go to one of my videos and where it says click subscribe, there will be a drop down menu I believe and you can click to be emailed for each new videos. I find sometimes with the new YouTube layout I'm missing out on videos from my favorite subscriptions because I don't see them way down below on the list there. Anyways, I find it easier to keep track of my favorite subscriptions that way. To get started today, one of the questions that I often get asked is what kind of carburetor kits do you keep in stock mostly? Well, the one that I mostly keep is the K10 watt kit from Walbro, and that's for small two-cycle carburetors like on trimmers and chainsaws. I also keep a lot of K20 watt kits from Walbro. I also keep a lot of Zama kits, Tillotson kits. Well, not as many of the Tillotson kits, but mostly Walbro and Zama. I'm going to make a video on that one day, so I'm just going to give you the most common ones right now. Like I said, the K10 and the K20, which are from Walbro. And also, if you want to keep a few Zama kits, you can keep the GND28, which is common on different chainsaws and stuff like that. If you're not sure, just go online, type in the kit that you want, and then you can match it up to the kits that you need for your saws or equipment, whatever you have. Or what you could do is ask your distributor or your small engine shop, which are the kits that they sell most regularly. And then you can buy a couple and keep them ahead of time. So when you get a customer, it's a lot faster. You don't have to run around for parts all the time. If you do keep some parts in stock, it's going to save you a lot of running around. It's amazing how much time you waste looking for parts and stuff like that all over town. Now another common question I get asked a lot is, is it typical of Tecumseh carburetors to always surge and have issues with them? Well, to give you an example, 9 out of 10 snowblowers that I work on have a Tecumseh engine at the moment. And 9 times out of 10, I need to do some kind of work to the carburetor. So it's pretty normal, it's pretty typical of these carburetors. They're not bad carburetors, it's just they need a lot of attention and care. And if your snowblower surges up and down, what the most likely causes can be is water in the carburetor, some kind of moisture, some kind of dirt. Usually if the engine is surging, it's because it's starving for fuel. That's why it goes up and down and it's very annoying. You can always try adjusting the carburetor if you have an older machine where the carburetor is adjustable. But on most newer Tecumseh engines, the carburetors are not adjustable. So in that case, you would definitely have to clean it or replace the carb kit inside of the carb and possibly the bowl. And a lot of people will ask me, well, what's the carb kit if I don't have an adjustable carburetor? Well, most of the time it's going to be 631021B and it's going to have the bowl o-ring, the needle, the seat and the bowl nut gasket. Now you can also just replace this kit in your carburetor even if it's an adjustable carb. This kit will fit it anyways. If you get the full repair kit for your adjustable carburetor, it's going to have a lot more parts in it like the bowl nut, the screws and the small o-rings that go behind the screws. And again, if you're a mechanic and you're wondering what kind of kits should I keep in stock, well this is definitely one of them. This kit here, number 631021B is one of the most common Tecumseh carburetor kits you're ever going to use. It fits on snowblowers, it fits on lawnmowers, all kinds of different equipment with the Tecumseh carburetor. It's very cheap to replace and oftentimes that's all you need to do. You don't need to put a full repair kit in a lot of carburetors. So just keep them in stock because what happens is oftentimes the bowl o-ring here gets deteriorated and air leaks into the carburetor and then it doesn't run properly. Now this kit here contains the o-ring and other parts in it, but you can also buy just the o-ring. It's part number 631028A from Tecumseh. All that is is the rubber o-ring. So I stock a lot of both of these because I'm always replacing them. Another question I got the other day is a YouTuber emailed me asking me if he damaged his motor by putting too much oil in the fuel. I believe it was a chainsaw or something like that, so it's got mixed fuel. Well, the answer to that is no, you're not going to damage your chainsaw if you run it with too much oil in the gas. You may want to remove the gas from your chainsaw if it's too rich in oil and replace it with a proper mixture. Sometimes if there's too much oil in your gas you may not get the same RPMs at top end speed and you may notice that it smokes like crazy. 
You don't want to run your equipment with too much oil for too long because you're going to carbon up the piston and the exhaust port and if that carbon breaks away it can scratch up your piston and rings and cylinder and then you've got a big repair on your hands. So always follow the manufacturer's recommended specifications for mixing your fuel. In some of the previous Q&A's I talked a bit about valves and stuff on little Tecumseh engines and some people are wondering what could be the symptoms of a leaking exhaust valve. Well as I've mentioned before it may not run properly, you may not have the same power from your engine than you did when it was brand new but another symptom is that the muffler may glow red. When you use your snowblower for a while you may notice that the muffler is going to be glowing red hot like I'm talking really red. That's because the exhaust valve is leaking and letting some of the flame go through and as it passes through the muffler it just heats it right up. Now sometimes if your carburetor is adjusted too lean, for example if you have an adjustable carburetor and it's set too lean, the muffler may also glow red. So what you could do in that case is turn out the screws to make the carburetor adjustment much richer. And if after that it still glows red, then you know for sure it's the exhaust valve. But sometimes adjusting the carburetor will help it not glow red anymore. And as I mentioned in the previous videos, there can be a lot more symptoms to a leaking exhaust valve. You're welcome to post your comments as well if you want under the video as to your opinion or experience in regards to leaking exhaust valves and their symptoms. Another question I often get from YouTubers in the winter time is when they go to use their snowblower, they prime the engine and then they see gas leaking out of the carburetor and they're wondering if there's something going wrong. Well the answer to that is no and I'm assuming that you have a Tecumseh engine on your snowblower. So if you over prime it what's going to happen is the fuel is going to leak out of the carburetor and go on the ground. The fuel is unable to flood the engine that way because it has to work its way up into the intake pipe. The only way you're going to really flood it is if you over prime it then keep pulling the cord with the choke on and keep doing that until it's eventually full of fuel in the cylinder head. But to make things simple it's normal to see gas drip out of the carburetor when you prime it. And I'm just going to show you the Tecumseh engine here just to refresh our memories. So I'm assuming that your engine looks like this and your primer is right over here. And when you go to prime it you know if you go like four or five times you may see gas drip underneath. And watch carefully down here I'm going to prime it four or five times and you are going to see the fuel drip. And that's normal. You know when you see the fuel drip like that that it's time to stop. And here's a carburetor that goes on one of these snow blowers and you can see here that the intake pipe is vertical so the fuel obviously just leaks right out. So this is what's happening. You over prime it, the fuel is leaking out and going on the ground. It's not necessarily a bad thing but you don't really want fuel to be dripping on the ground or on your garage floor. And as I previously mentioned the only way you're really going to flood it in that case is if the choke's on, you keep priming it and pulling the cord because then it's sucking all the fuel up into the engine. If you think you flooded your engine, put the choke off, put the throttle wide open and keep cranking. If you're unsure if you flooded it or not and you keep cranking with the choke off and the throttle wide open and it still won't start, then probably needs a few more shots of primer or there's some other issue going on with your carburetor. What you can do is figure out the best way that works for you for starting your machine. What I do is I put the choke on, I give it two shots of primer and usually that's enough to get it going. But if you have your own method of starting your snowblower, that's okay too. So that'll be pretty well it for this week's Q&A. Again, I want to thank you guys for all your support. I try my best to answer all the questions, but sometimes it's just impossible. I do spend a lot of time every day answering questions. So if I don't get to your question, it's not that it's not important. It's just sometimes I'm just way too busy. Again, I want to thank all you guys for your donations. It's very much appreciated. It all goes back into making videos for you guys. So thanks for watching, have yourselves a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday. Take care guys.